Okay, good morning, everybody. I am so thrilled and excited to be here again while we learn our mimer, let's see, Mishakela, full devotion. I wanted to make a short uh, clarification from yesterday. It was early in the morning and I was tired. So the top, the, the essence of it all, it's not Atsilis. Atsilis is one of the world's insider astrologers. It actually goes down here. The actual top, it's Atmos of Mohos Ein Seif. Okay? So we're going to call it Atmos as a, a short nickname. Um, but I just want to clarify from yesterday that this is the correct way of speaking about it, looking at it, and we're going to continue on from there. So, one liner for every parak, because I decided that way we don't lose the flow of the mimers. So, first parak is we discuss all the brachas and how we get it, how we get every single one of the brachas through serving the abister, right? So, we get all these brachas, we analyze the pasuk, what brachas do we get? Life, health, and sustenance. No. <laughs> children, life, sustenance, and children. Then we do this by our service. So then we say, one second, by the second, by the second uh, ice, we say, wait a minute, what does it mean to serve Hashem? In order to understand that we have to get, the, we get those brachas through, through serving Hashem. So now we have to understand what does it mean to serve Hashem? Which leads us to a very uh, interesting question of this whole concept of master and a servant, which is if uh, that the, in nature, within you know the rules of the world, a master needs something and the servant fulfills it. But how can we say, how can we possibly say that the Abister needs anything? He is perfect. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. He is almighty. How can he need anything? So then we leave, leaves us with a question, do our actions matter to Hashem? Do we make a difference to Him or do they not? Does our time, you know, our productivity during our day or our, our, you know, what we do during our time really make a difference? Does it make an impact at all in the world or does it not? Right? Which goes on to answer the very personal question that we're hoping to get to in, um, for ourselves in our own avayda. Then comes um, the third ice, which is in order to understand this question or in order to answer this question, we need to understand different levels within godliness, right? So in order to understand whether we do or do not affect the abister, we have to understand who the abister is, what are all the parts within godliness to be able to understand which, where do we affect and where do we not affect. So then we did and we discussed all the pieces and then we realized or then we we uh we discussed that we, we we understood to what extent our avoida right so when we do something here we are either breaking um creating and like ma maintaining the caleb the the vessels within state or all the way up to arich ampin or oh and, and it, uh, according to our understanding so far, we actually do not affect, right? So that, that's what we have in clarity so far. All the way up to here we affect, then comes Atik, and Atik, which is the top level of Kesser, Atik goes, and then uh, we do not affect, according to what we're up to right now, okay? So just to give you guys an introduction into our, what we're going to discuss today, we are going to explain that even if you look at the at the at the shot of our pasuk, right, at the simple understanding, if you go back into the pasuk and you say, wait, 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 one second, what is this pasuk saying? We realize that it doesn't really make sense what we just said. Our whole ice gimel, the 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 third chapter, which said that to a certain extent we do and to a certain extent we don't. Even within our Pasuk, there is a contra seeming contradiction in whether we do or we don't affect those levels of Hashem, okay? And then we're going to go, we're going to understand it even deeper. So again, hold a cup, it's going to be really, really good. And then all of this is going to be understood in levels of our Avaidah. What does that actually mean in my service of Hashem? What does that actually mean with my levels of, 
productivity and how I use my time and all that good stuff. Okay. So now we're on page 34. Yeah, we're on page 34 in the Mimer. However, it is still necessary to understand how the Pasuk, you shall serve the Lord your God, refers not only to the levels within Seder Stalshus, right? The ones within Seder Stalshus, you shall serve, where the concept of Avaida applies, as mentioned earlier, but also to a level that transcends Seder Stalshus. So something that's even higher than Seder Stalshus. So one second, within our Pasuk, we're saying, not only do we affect Seder Stalshus, but we also affect something higher. What? How does that make sense? We just said we don't, right? Okay. In order to understand this, we have to understand something else. Who narrated the Torah? Have you guys ever thought about that? Who narrates? Who talks? It says, and Hashem spoke. You know, Hashem El or Hashem El right? So Hashem spoke to Maisha. Who's speaking? Is it Hashem? Is it Maisha? Right? Okay, so now let's understand this. This will be understood by first analyzing the wording of this Pasuk, which appears to contradict itself from the beginning to the end. In the beginning, the Pasuk states, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless. Meaning in the third person, right? And you shall serve whoever is the speaker speaking about you, the, the Yid, shall serve Hashem. Hashem is a separate entity, and and he, Hashem, will bless you, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's like a contract. The, uh, uh, you know, person A will do ex what they need to do for person B, and person B will, will uh, supply the payment or whatever, right? But meanwhile, later, the Pasuk states, and I will take away in the first person as if God were speaking about himself. So one second, is it a third person narrator or is there a first person narrator? right? The resolution of this is based on the Ramban in the introduction to his commentary on Torah, right? So, sorry, so the Ramban, not the Rambam, the Ramban, and by the way, it, it's good to, to practice uh, the emphasis in the syllable because, yeah, so it's the Ramban. So the Ramban has a commentary, his introduction to the Torah. What does he say in his introduction? Quote, our teacher, Moshe, did not write the Torah, on the, meaning the first four books, in the first person, but in the third person. End quote. The narrator is neither Moshe nor God's name, Havaya, but seemingly a third person, as evident from Havaya spoke to Moses, saying, This is not Moshe speaking, for in that case it would have stated, and Havaya spoke to me. Nor are these the words of Havaya. For if not, it would have stated, and I spoke to Maisha. Rather, it is neither. It's not Havai or Maisha, but seemingly a third entity who narrates and tells the words of Havai to Maisha. So isn't that interesting? Had we ever thought about this? Who is the narrator in the Torah? Is it the Aegister? Is it Maisha? And now, and, and the Ramban actually explains that it's neither. It's a, it, Moshe is writing it as a third person narrator, right? So who is this third person? In order to understand this, let's continue on. The explanation for this is that the third person is transcendent. It transcends Moshe and it even transcends Hashem's name, Havaya. Although the name Havaya represents past, present, and future, right? Because we said, um, Right? So the Abister, the Abister's name Havai represents past, present, and future, which is transcendence. But the fact is that past, present, and future are existences within a level of existence. So even the name Havaya, which is the, the highest level, right? So usually we refer, when we think about Hashem's names, we think Elohim or Elikos or is related to Teva, right? That's, that's, that's the level of Hashem that lives in our world, so to speak, that, you know, um, makes nature fun function or whatever. And we think of Havaya as just like something above us. But meanwhile, what we're saying is that there is something even higher, something even more transcendent than the name Havaya. 
the aspect. Oh, okay. Although the name Havaya represents past, present, and future as one, it nonetheless relates to creation. In other words, to Ishtalshu, since there is a concept of past, present, and future, it means that this level of Havaya has a, a certain level of relating to our world. If it were so transcendent, it wouldn't even it wouldn't even touch past, present, and future because past, present, and future are creations of time, right? So this level of Havaya still has a relationship to Seder Stalshus, which means that there's something even more transcendent. The aspect that transcends both of them, meaning Maisha and Havaya, is pause. In our text, the text translates it as the quintessence of the infinite, okay? Uh, um, I'm sure somebody can go in their dictionary and look up what quintessence of the infinite is, but I am going to explain it to you, and then we're going to call it the Hebrew terminology for the entire Maimur Mitzvah Hashem, as long as I'm able to. So it'll make a lot more sense when we call the quintessence of the infinite Atmos Omehos Ein Saif. Okay? So in the Hebrew text, it, it, it was funny when I learned it in the Hebrew, I was like, wait a minute, that makes more sense. What does the quintessence of the infinite actually mean? So Atmos Omehos Ein Saif, it's this top piece, right? So what we just said in right now is that the piece, so to speak, that runs, that runs from here to here is related to Havaya, right? But something that's beyond Seder Stalsha, something that's even beyond any type of relationship, it's Atmos Omehos Ein Saif, it's this. So essentially, when who's narrating the Torah? Atmos Omehos Ein Saif is talking about what Havaya is doing in relation to Amesha. Does that make sense? I mean, I don't get any nods because you guys are nodding, but I, I hope that makes sense, okay? So that this is the quintessence of the infinite. We're going to call it Atmos Omehos Ein Saif, and that's the narrator. Okay, back to the text. The aspect that transcends both of them, meaning transcends Moshe and Havaya, is Asmos Omehos Ein Saif, blessed be he. It is he who speaks and tells about the words of Havaya to Moshe. In other words, relating that what transpired within his Shlos, right? So this is Asmos Omehos Ein Saif is talking about what is going on between his Shlos in, in relation from Havaya to Moshe. Okay, I want to read footnote 49, just for clarity's sake, just so we know. In the Hebrew, which literally means self and essence, or essence and substance, the phrase refers to the essence of Hashem, or God himself, beyond all definition. Transcending all description, Atmos cannot possibly be defined or evaluated in any way or have any attributed properties, right? So even Havaya, which is so transcendent, it's above us, but the fact is that it has it has attributed properties that it's a um, past, present, and future all in one, right? But meanwhile, Atmos of Hosein Saif is the essence of the Avistur, and there's no, there are no words to describe it because it just is the essence and that's just it. Uh, any words to describe would show a certain level of description, which is a you know part of Seder's Dalshus. Okay, so now that we've figured out who is the narrator, now let's go back and think about what this actually means for us. Atmos, oh, 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 pause, pause, we're not there yet. Okay, I'm going to give a short introduction. At this point, the text of the Mimer is going to use examples from Kabbalah to prove a point, okay? For us to stop and discuss every single one of the examples and understand it deeply, is it would take a whole other sheer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through it, and if you'd like, at the end of the share, if you have a question or if you feel like you want to understand it better, I'm happy to answer questions. But I'm not going to discuss it in depth in smack in the middle because if not, we're gonna we're gonna have it's gonna take a long time and we're gonna lose the flow of the mind. Okay. So Atmos is specifically called third, as is similarly found in the Pasuk. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day, he will rise us up. So as we discussed in the last timer, right, that what's going to happen when Moshiach comes, 
we're going to have this taste and appreciation for how the Abister creates, not just creates the world, but we're going to have a taste and appreciation for the Abister himself. So here, what we're saying is that process of Mashiach coming, and this pasuk is in relation to Mashiach, after two days, he will revive us, meaning Tzchiyas Mesim. On the third day, he will rise, raise us up, which means on the third day, so to speak, third day, whatever that actually means, but on the third day after Mashiach comes, we will have a touch, a, 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 a taste of God's, he will raise us up to be able to touch and, and have that, that, that taste of the quintessence of Hashem, the, 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 the essence of him, who he is without Seder Salsha. So even though we are uh, part of Seder Salsha, we are, we are definitive people, we'll get a taste of the infinite. We're finite people, we'll get a taste of the infinite, okay? So... It is known after two days, he will revive us, refers to the totality of the Ishtalshus, which is divided into two, right? So we're going to take that Pasuk, we're going to move it away from the concept of Mashiach, so to speak, and we're going to say, what does it actually mean? Two days, everything in Seder Ishtalshus is representative in two, right? There is Memalik Kalalman and there's Saiv of Kalalman. Memalik Kalalman is the source of God, of the life force that lives, for example, within this book right it's separate entities and it fills it fuels the life force of me or the life force of you know everything but it's separate entities but meanwhile save of kalamim is kind of like wi-fi wi-fi my wi-fi is all the way in another room it is crossing the boundaries of separate entities it's godly light that it just goes straight through it's going to be a very short explanation there's a lot more to understand but it's just an example um Right, so the world, our world, Seder Stalshlis, or Seder Stalshlis, including our world, comes in, in entities of two. Mimala Kalamim and Seiv of Kalamim. Oros and Kalim, right? The light and the vessel, which we discussed yesterday. Light as it stands on its own, or and as it is revealed to another, right? So everything in Seder Stalshlis comes in like packages of two. This and this, this and this, this and this. But meanwhile, on the third day, refers to the revelation of the quintessence of the infinite blessed be he, which we're going to call Atmus Mahos Ein Saif, right? So the fact is, everything within Seder Stalshus comes in twos, in pairs. But meanwhile, the third day, which is, we're going to understand that what that means, actually refers to Atmus Mahos Ein Saif. So what are we saying? That when we're talking about Seder Stalshus, Right, it says there's twos, everything is in twos, but the third, meaning the third narrator, the third person narrator, this this thing that's above. So, for example, here at the twos that we're discussing here, it's Havai and Maisha, let's say, right? So they speak to each other. This is referring to Seder, everything within Seder Stalshus. Above Seder Stalshus is the third person narrator, right? So that's the third piece. So on the third day, it's just used as a as as a proof. Okay, moving on. Page 40. This is why the verse states, and you shall serve Havaya, your God, and he shall bless. Meaning, who's talking? The narrator of the Torah says that you will serve Havaya, your God, and then he shall bless your bread and water. That is, Havaya, regarding whom is stated, and you shall serve Havaya, your God, shall bless your bread and your water. Okay, so when we say, and you shall serve, means us down here, who do we serve? We serve the level of Havaya. And this level of Havaya will bless our bread and our water, right? So Havaya, who's talking? Atmos and Mahos is talking. And he's talking about what's going to happen. We are going to serve Havaya. Havaya is going to give us bracha. It's great. Mazel tov, right? Now, later the Pasuk states, and I will remove illness from your midst. The direct language of and I remove illness means that the narrator himself says that he will remove illness from the midst, right? So who are we saying? If Atmos Muslim Hussein Saif is the I, the narrator, so the Avister himself is saying that he will bless us. First he said, he said, oh, uh, Havaya is going to bless you for the good things. And then he says, Atmos Muslim Hussein Saif, the part that supposedly has nothing, no relation to us that we can't affect, that part itself is benching us what that's crazy okay from this we understood oh so from sorry 
from this is understood that the concept of Avaida applies not only to the level of Hashem's name Havaya, but also to the narrator of the Torah. Ah, it's Muslim Hossein Saif, blessed be he. Avaida causes not only that he shall bless, meaning Havaya, but also that I will remove illness through the quintessence of the infinite blessed to be he, through Ah, it's Muslim Hossein Saif. This requires further explanation since regarding spiritual levels that are higher than Hishtalshlus, the Pasuk states, if you're righteous, what do you give him, as mentioned earlier? So one second. You guys understand the question? We just spent the whole ice gimel, the third chapter, saying Seder Hishtalshlus gets affected. Of course, we do our thing. Seder Hishtalshlus gets affected, but Atma Sama Hossein Saif does not. But meanwhile, what are we saying now? In our Pasuk, Pasuk Shat, in the simple translation of our Pasuk, what does it say? First, it says, he shall bless. You do what he wants, and he'll bless you with bread and water. And then it says, I will bless you. I will remove illness. I will remove illness from within your midst. At Muslim Hussein Saif is getting involved in our life, and he'll make sure that we, are, we have no illness in our midst. Whoa! And it leaves us with a question. We just proved that only Seder Stalsus gets affected. But meanwhile, our avoid that being that being that we need to do our part and therefore Atmosaf will reward us, will give us brachis, it means that something does affect Atmosama Hussein Saif. What we do in our lives, how we choose to use how we choose to use our time, how we choose to prioritize our our you know our efforts in life, it does affect even Hashem's essence. I mean, the fact that it affects Seder Stalshus is already amazing, and that's incredible. We can actually make an impact in the world. But we have to realize that even the level of Atma Sama Hussein Saif, the Abishur himself, was beyond being related to anything. There is no way to describe him because he's so far removed, so to speak. We even affect him with our efforts. Okay? So I hope that blew your mind because it definitely blew mine. And, um, I wish we had a drop more time because the next, the next uh, ice, it's very, very short, but um, it kind of brings us down a little bit. And then get ready because ice Vav actually is going to give us the Avaida. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to get through ice Hey, which is very short. It's like two, two and a half paragraphs. Um, and then after that, ice Vav is going to say, okay, how do we live with this in Avaida? How do we, what do we do about this? So, just to finish off, to close off, um, we do make an, an effect, not just in the later levels of Seder Stalshlus, but also we make an effect to the point that the Abister himself, the, the essence of the Abister will bench us and will give us all these brachas. And so we do, we do, we make an impact. Guys, we're going to use our time properly because we make an impact on the Abister. Okay. With that said, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Get super pumped and excited about serving the Abister in whatever way you need to do so today. And we'll see you guys tomorrow in Meretz Hashem.